Right, I think we are live. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you very much for joining in, or good morning, depending on where you are. Uh, the chat isn't working again, so just give us a second and I will click the button that I need to click on to get it working, if I can find it. There it is. Refresh. So, yeah, if you can hear me and see me okay, please let me know in the chat. Uh, yeah, countdown stopped. Yeah, I wasn't keeping an eye on it. I was reading something in the rules about how much corruption I start with. So, yeah, that's my new fancy countdown. Um, yeah, it's basically a two-minute timer, but then I need to actually do something with it after that. Anyway, we have this new camera today. Uh, we are going to flip between the overhead camera uh, and the other camera, uh, because this game has a 3D element. You're building the buildings uh, with a particular height on them. So, yeah, I've got this other camera set up uh, just so you can get that, uh, that view of it, but I'm going to be using this one mainly. Uh, the heights of the buildings are used to determine majorities later on. Right, so today I'm going to be doing a solo playthrough uh, of High Rise by uh, Gilhover, Formal Ferret Games. Uh, this is not a sponsored video. This is a very rough and ready. This is Paul taking some time off his paid work to basically produce some fun playthroughs for people to watch. Uh, thank you very much to all of my Patreon supporters for uh, funding this video effectively uh, and funding a lot of the videos that I'm doing this month. Uh, a lot of you in the chat, so thank you very much, and hello to everybody who's watching afterwards. Um, what is the battle cam? The battle cam is actually, uh, this one that I'm using right now is a very old, it's about a 10 year old Panasonic S HDC SD600, uh, which was 80 quid off eBay about three years ago. So yeah, pretty cheap, pretty cheap. Right, anyway, we're doing the solo game today. Now, uh, again, more, more information. I last played this game about, I don't know, six months ago. Uh, I've never read the rule book. I was taught how to play the game from the designer himself. Played a game over Tabletopia, uh, which it was really good. I really enjoyed it. Uh, I've never played the solo game. So this morning I've been setting everything up. I've been reading through the rule book. And of course, because it's a solo game, there's some extra rules. So this is going to be very rough and ready. If you know how to play and you are in the chat, uh, yeah, please let me know. Uh, if I get anything wrong, uh, and if you're watching this afterwards and I've made any mistakes, I know Gil's still asleep at the moment, um, then yeah, please let me know in the comments afterwards if I've made any mistakes. So, the objective of the solo game is to basically try and score as many points as we can. This track here, this is the score track, but it's also got the corruption track on the inside. Uh, and basically, at the end of the game, depending on how well we score, depends on how well we do. If we get fewer than 60 victory points, it is a critical loss, we've gone bankrupt. So we're trying to score at least 60. Um, the other players do not score points. The reason the other players have got buildings on the board is that they are blocking those spaces so that I can't build in them. And there are bonus points at the end of each round for the height of the buildings in the different areas. Uh, so what that means is that, yeah, I basically got to take that into account. Uh, right, okay, so, what else? The setup is slightly different, so if you know how to play the multiplayer game, you may notice that there's no bonus tiles on the board. I have set it up already, I did that earlier on today. So we have these tenant tiles, and there's a lot of variability with this game, because the game comes with, if we were to take, for example, uh, Bayside Heights, which is this area here, there are actually nine tenant tiles included in the game. And what you do is you shuffle them and you pick three and that's it. They are the three tiles. The other ones go out of the game. So three random tiles here, three random tiles in Bayside Heights. So three in Downtown, three in Bayside Heights, three in East Gardens, three in Harborside. And then you'll notice some of them have got cards next to them. So some of these tiles also require a deck of cards. Some of them don't. Uh, it all depends on the card itself. So we've got extra cards here, an extra card up there, but no cards there, no cards here. Uh, so that, that's the fixed... Oh, and then obviously we've got three in the city centre as well. Uh, excellent. Adam's here. Andy's here. Chris is here. Mark's here. Cool. Thank you for joining in. Um, <clears throat> so bonus tiles. So normally in a setup, a multiplayer game, you would be adding these uh, bonus tiles to the board here, here, uh, and here. Uh, but in the solo game, you don't. In the solo game, you still populate the fixed spots with random things. Uh, but you draw six bonus tiles and line them up alongside the edge of the board here, along with three floor tiles. And we'll get to how they get assigned in a minute. Uh, neutral buildings are already on the board, and as I say, they, they don't do anything other than affect my scoring. Blueprint, blueprint blocker tiles are here. We'll come on to those later, because I've read that twice this morning and don't quite understand it. Um, I think we're good to go. 
Yeah, now in the solo game, I start off on number one. The other two players, so I'm using this red and I think it's supposed to be blue, but it's like a really dark bluey green. I don't know what color that is. I don't know what color you would call that. I mean, it probably looks black on camera. Let's switch to this camera. This is a bit bright, this one. But yeah, it's a very, very sort of dark gray blue type of thing. Anyway, that's what I'm using for the third player. Uh, so yeah, there are two neutral moguls. In a two-player game, you use one neutral mogul. Um, so yeah, it's one of those games that requires three players. And in a solo game, you kind of do two other players' movements. Right. Am I ready to start? I think I am. Right, so we're going to be playing the game over three rounds. Each round is a decade. Uh, we're going to start, because we're playing the full game, you always play the full game when you're playing solo. Uh, there is a, a, an introductory mode and a standard mode. Uh, if you want a shorter game for multiplayer but solo and two player, you always play the full game. So it's three decades. We start off in 2010. We have a blueprint card for 2010, which was chosen randomly from a big set of blueprint cards. We have one for 2020. We also have one for 2030, but that is kept secret for now. So that goes face down under there. So each round is a decade. We're playing in 2010 at the moment. And basically what we're going to be doing, very high level overview, is we're going to move moving our pieces from here uh, clockwise around the board. Okay. Whoever is the furthest back on that track will take the next turn. So it uses that mechanism. And then once uh, all players have reached the stop zone, which is... I think it's here. I think this is, yeah, this is the stop zone. Once all players have reached the stop zone, the round ends. And that's when we do some scoring. Uh, and then we'll go into 2020 and we'll do the same thing again. So on your turn, you are if you are the furthest back, which I am, you basically move your mogul, this is your mogul, to any space you want to. You can move as far as you want to. So if I really wanted to, I could go all the way to here right now. Now that's a crazy idea because if I did that, that would be the one action that I get to do in this entire um, decade, which is which is silly. But each of the action spaces is divided into zones. So this is one zone, this is another zone. You cannot move, for example, from there to there. You have to move to at least the next zone. You can move as far as you want, but you cannot stay within the same zone. So that's quite a cool uh, way that that time track works. Um, Overall, what you're going to be doing in the game is you're going to be collecting floors. Floors will be, uh, these are floors, they come in different colours. Uh, you'll be collecting these on your player board here. There is also a thing called Ultra Plastic, which is a wild card that can be used for things. Uh, and then eventually you will be going onto the construction spaces to be constructing these skyscrapers on the board here. Okay, so if we look at the blueprint card, uh, these are this is what's required for 2010. So if I want to build a, a height two building, it has to be uh, pink and purple. But remember, I can use ultra plastic as a, as a wild card. Um, and if I do that, it's a height two. If I want to build a height three building, it's got to be that or that. Height four has got to be that. This here means that the fourth floor can be made of anything. But if I do make it out of ultra plastic, then I get a plus one onto the, onto the height. Um, and then what you do is you take appropriate building from this big stack of buildings which I have off camera, okay? And you put it on the board and that gets you the appropriate thing. Uh, yeah, it gets you the appropriate card. I think you land on them as well and that gets you the card. Anyway, uh, Anthony's here. He played his first game of this a couple of weeks ago. Interested to see how the solo game worked. Excellent, Anthony. Well, if I get anything wrong, please let me know because yeah, it's been, it's been months since I played it. Anyway, that's a very high level overview. We're gonna crack on. It is my go first because I am the furthest back on the track. Um, I think we've done the setup correctly. So again, this is the full game. The setup is different for each each type of game. Uh, flow of the game. Yeah, so bonus spaces. I need to remember how the bonus spaces work in a solo game. I'll read that again in a minute. Uh, oh, there's corruption as well. We'll come on to that later. Movement. So yes, you can move only clockwise to an action space on the one-way track that is not occupied by another player and is in a different zone. So I could, if I wanted to, you know, go to one of these zones straight away. Uh, this would allow me to pick up uh, this type of floor, this type of floor, ultra plastic. And if I was to spend corruption, I would get an extra one out of the bag. So this here is not related to this. These tiles here are just alongside the edge of the board. Um, in fact, I might move them along a little bit. 
It's a bit dark, actually. Um, yeah, so don't think that these action spaces here are associated with these tiles. They are not. This is just somewhere that I have lined up those tiles. Um, yeah, it looks a bit, a bit dark over that side of the board. There we go, a bit more brighter. Okay, and the chat's gone. If anybody knows how to fix the YouTube chat problem on XSplit, please let me know because it's a real pain that it keeps disappearing. Uh, and I've been trying to fix it and yeah, at least I can get it back and at least I'm, I'm watching it live. Um, but yeah, YouTube chat just keeps breaking and keeps losing its connection and I, I, I don't know why. Right, so yeah, so I, I could go to here if I wanted to, or I could skip over this zone and I could go to this zone. Now, what that means is that I will have skipped over this bonus area here, which means I can take something in that, that bonus area. But of course, I'm missing out on this. So I think I'm going to play slowly uh, and we'll see what happens. Okay, first time I've played solo, I've no idea what I'm doing. So I'm going to go to here. That gets me one ultra plastic, which is awesome because it's a wild card. And I can choose if I want to, to gain a corruption to gain some extra resources. And I'm going to. So I'm going to gain one corruption. Uh, and then that icon there with the question mark on means I draw a random thing out of the bag. Set up a script to restart the chat. Oh, yes. Oh, and yes, thank you for yeah mentioning that, uh, Mr. Jacobs. Please remember to click thumbs on the video. So I get some of this blue stuff. Right, there we go. Uh, and that is it. That That is my go done. Nice, simple first turn. Now, moving the neutral moguls. So I mentioned that you use one neutral mogul in a two-player game, and we're using two neutral moguls because it's a one-player game. So the neutral moguls, uh, one player is always considered the controlling player, which is me. Okay, so I am the controlling player. As regular player moguls, neutral moguls take their turn when they are the furthest behind, so it is now red. The controlling player, me, decides if they will use the neutral mogul to block or to move. Um, if I use it to block, I place it on the first available action space of the zone in front of the lead player. So if I was to choose to block, it would go from there and it would go to here. I believe that is an action space. Um, yeah. Uh, do not take the associated action or power cards. It literally just goes there and blocks the space and that would be it if I wanted to do that. My other option, uh, hi Jill, thank you for joining in. Um, my other option is to move. If I use the neutral mogul to move, I gain a corruption, but then I move the neutral mogul to any legal space in his current or next neighbourhood. Now, it uses the word neighbourhood there rather than zone. So I'm not 100% sure on the definition of a neighbourhood. I mean, East Gardens is this... Surely you can't move to within the same zone. We have an example here, right? The red mogul is a neutral mogul. If the controlling player decides to block, it moves onto the indicated space. Yep. Example here, the red mogul is a neutral mogul. The controlling player may move it to any of the spaces marked O. Ah, so it can move within the same zone. The spaces marked X are the two neighbourhoods away. Right, yeah, so a neighbourhood is is the, basically the quarter of the board. Right, okay. So in this case, it can move to any legal space in its current or the next neighbourhood. So it could move from here to literally any of these. I could move it to any of those if I want to. If I do that, I gain a corruption if I move it, but then I take the associated action as if it was me that moved there. And if during that action, I lose one or more corruption, I, addition I additionally lose one point. So yeah, so again, I don't know what I should be doing here. Um, gaining an extra action seems good, but corruption is, is bad. You do lose points for corruption. Um, but I like the idea of taking extra actions. Potentially, if I increase my corruption a lot, I can basically keep taking three actions a turn if I want to. Um, let's have a look at the building. What can, what do we need to build? We need purple and pink to build a small one. Maybe we should go for the big one. 
like right away. Uh, so we need, oh, we've got the one we haven't, well, we've got the one we don't need. Well, that's no good, is it? Yeah, okay, so I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to gain the corruption. Again, learning game, and I'm going to move this red one, and I'm going to move it rather than blocking, and we're going to move to uh, here, and this tells us that we can take that particular one out of the bag. So we look through the bag, and we take that particular one, okay? Now, there is something here that says... Uh, I can also spend a corruption to take another one out of the bag. Um, but it says here, if during that action you lose one or more corruption, additionally lose one victory point for the entire action. Is that right? That seems like it would be if you were to gain a corruption. Now, there is some FAQ online, which I did spot. Um, where is it? Uh, it was definitely here. Official FAQ and errata. So, let me just check. What is a neighbourhood? Is it the area? Yeah, the neighbourhood refers to the whole coloured area on the board that you move through. Coloured area. Right, yeah. Um, are the building tiles limited? The architecture refers to car. Right, for the memorial, penthouse, almanac. Uh, these seem like specific ones for specific questions. Okay, so no, it's there's nothing in there, unless I've missed it. Yep, nothing in there. So it looks like it, it is right. It, it does say if you lose one or more corruption, additionally lose one point for the entire act. I don't know what that rule is in there for specifically, but it's obviously in there for a reason. Uh, the question is, do I want to take another corruption... to get a random thing out of the bag. I'm gonna say no. Okay, I'm gonna say no. So now it is this, this what are we gonna call it? Blue gray player. Um, and with this one, I think we're just gonna use this to block. Just for something different. So it basically goes to here and it blocks that space and I don't gain any corruption. Right, now let's have a look at the bonus rules, bonus tile rules for a solo game. Right, the neutral mogul never picks up bonus tiles whether the controlling player is blocking or moving. Oh no, sorry, that's in a two-player game. Two play. Forget that, forget that, forget that. Um, bonus spaces, right. If you move your mogul over a set of bonus spaces ahead of both neutral moguls, so if on my first turn I was to actually move over this area here, Choose any one of the remaining bonus tiles. That's these. But what about these? Maybe you're not supposed to put them on the board in a solo game. Anybody know? Kenneth is here. Hi, Kenneth. Thank you for joining in. It does say, one player game, do not place bonus tiles on the board. Right, so these are the bonus tiles. Normally, you would place these on the board. It says, do not place them on the board. Instead, draw six random bonus tiles and place them face up in a line near the stop zone next to the board. Draw three random floors and place them next to the bonus tiles. Complete the remaining setup steps as in the neutral game. So I've put these on there and I'm not sure whether I should have done. I don't know. If Gil was awake and in the chat, then I would ask him. The reason I'm saying this is because in the rule book it says, um, so for normal multiplayer setup, what you would do is you would Take, sh shuffle the bonus tiles for 2010 and place one face up on each blank bonus square on the board, which is these. This is a blank bonus square. Um, then, depending on the bonus tile that was chosen, you would put stuff on the board. And then it says two bonus spaces on the board are fixed, which is there and there. Okay. Uh, do not put any bonus tiles on them, but fill them with the appropriate floors and or ultra plastic as described above. I don't think they go on the board. So I'm going to take these off, okay? Again, if that's wrong, I'm hoping somebody's going to tell me, but I don't think these, space, these spaces in a solo game should be used. It's not... Uh, I'm going to be working with Gil uh, next month on a new version of the rulebook, and I will 
definitely get him to make that clear because it's not 100% clear. It says don't put any bonus tiles on the board, but it doesn't say what to do with the pre-printed bonus tiles. So anyway, I'm checking the chat to see if anybody knows. Nobody knows. Right, okay. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> so, meanwhile, back to the rules on picking up the bonus tiles. Um, if you move your mogul over a set of bonus spaces ahead of both neutral moguls, choose any one of the remaining bonus tiles. If you choose one that, choose, that has flaws, you take them from here and then you restock this three. If a neutral mogul is the first to pass a set of bonus spaces ahead of both neutral... Sorry. If a neutral mogul is the first to pass a set of bonus spaces, which it was, this neutral mogul is the first to have passed here. Discard the bonus tile closest to the corner of the board without effect. That goes. After the first mogul passes a set of bonus spaces, these bonus spaces will have no effect when any of the other two moguls pass it. Okay. So, Michael agrees with my interpretation. That's good. Uh, Richmond is here. Hi, Richmond. Thank you very much. Uh, Dan's here from Merchant Print Digital. Hi, Dan. Thank you for joining in. Um, so, Richmond, if you have played solo, have I just done that bit correctly with the bonus tiles? Let me know. If you haven't played solo, you might not know. Anyway, so that's that done. Now it is the red player, which again is the neutral mogul. Um, do I want to block or do I want to... No, I'm going to move it and I'm going to move it to there. So I gain a corruption for moving it, but I get a grey floor tile out of the bag. This is going to be very, very rough for the first half hour, three quarters of an hour or so. But after I've got past this learning curve, it will be flowing. Uh, Tom is here. Hi, Tom. Thank you very much. Missed the first 20 minutes. Yeah, that's fine. That's 20 minutes of me fumbling around not knowing what I'm doing. <laughs> She's kind of still where we are. Um, so yeah, so that's that done. And then it's that go again. So again, do I move or do I block? So I think I'm going to block this time because I'm a little concerned by this corruption. <laughs> I can't remember how much corruption is bad. Um, but we're going to block, which means we go to there. I think that's right. Um, place it on the first available action space of the zone in front of the lead player. Yeah, which is there. Right, so now it's my go because I'm at the back. Now I could go here. Or I could go here. Or I could go here and construct. Now, I don't think I want to construct yet because I want a purple one and there is a purple one there. Now what does a shipping firm do? After you draw, draw again. Yeah, I need to just read about these cards. So this is the bit I'm really rusty on is these cards and when you get them. Um, movement bonus spaces, action spaces, stopping on a space with a building. When you stop on a space with a building, activate the tenant power as normal. Now this space doesn't have a building. Actions. When you stop on a printed action space, you must perform the pictured action. If you cannot perform the action, you may not stop on the space. The only optional actions are in the stop zone. Here's an overview of the common actions. When you stop on a tenant tile, which is this, instead of performing a regular action, you activate the tenant power, okay? If you stop on a space with a building, which is this one, for example, um, you activate the tenant as normal, and additionally, you may draw one floor from the bag randomly into your construction yard, but if you do so, you must gain a corruption, as you are clearly embezzling. And I thought, yeah, the player who owns the building gets a random floor from the bag. Okay, right. So... Yeah, it's do I want to stop on the shipping firm and activate activate that. So tenant powers are described on page 18. Uh, the tenants represent the tenant tiles represent powerful tenants currently living in temporary headquarters looking for a nice shiny skyscraper to call home. There are two ways to activate them. You must activate them when you stop on a space, yeah, and you may activate them when you construct a building when you construct on the building space. When you activate a tenant power, you will either get an immediate bonus or you'll get a power card for later. So this one simply gets a power card. Um, tenant powers activate after a building is constructed. If you gain, right, okay. And power cards, 
you basically take them, put them in front of you. Um, you're allowed to have multiple copies of the same card, the power stack. And this basically is after I draw, draw again. So I can use this once per round whenever I draw anything out of the bag to draw again. I'm not, I'm not going to take that. I'm actually going to go here. Is this going to work out? No, this isn't going to work out. Because I'm trying to build this one and I've got the grey, I've got the pink, I'm about to get the purple, but I can't get the black. I can't get the black as well. And... Okay, I worked out how to do this. I'm going to go there and I'm going to get the black tile. Okay, so I'm going to get the black tile and I'm not going to take a corruption. Ben's here. Hi, Ben. Thank you very much for joining in. Ah, Brett has looked up the answer on BGG. You ignore the pre-printed bonuses and choose from the six tiles. Thank you very much. Uh, Severine is here. Oh, yeah, Battle Cam. Check out Battle Cam for a 3D view. Uh, it's a really old camera, so it's a little bit bright, as you can see. It's, it's getting a lot of reflection. Uh, yeah, it's not a very good camera. So anyway, uh, no, I'm picking a black one. There you go. Got a black floor. Not going to pay the corruption to get the extra one. Um, right, okay. So, now what I'm going to do, switch back to the overhead. Uh, is that light enough? It looks a little bit. It looks a little bit dark over there, a little bit bright over here. It's a problem with this room. I need more lighting. Um, so it's now this one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose to move this one rather than block. And when I move, I, I gain a corruption and I put it there. And I get a purple out the back. And there we go. We've got enough for a supersized thing. Purple. Boom. Right? Okay. Then what I do is... No, that's not right. That's not right. Let me just check that. I think I've got that wrong. Oh, which means my whole plan is gone. Place it in the first available action space of the zone in front of the lead player. Yeah, I think I got that wrong. Yeah. Okay, that's that's not right. So let's put that back. If I was to choose to block with this one. No, sorry, I'm choosing action. Yeah, 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 I'm choosing action. If I choose to block, it would go there. Right, okay, I'm right. I'm losing the plot. I'll be Jaffa Cake. It's my excuse anyway. Purple one. Right, so I use the corruption to gain that. Now it's red. So if red blocks, it goes there. I don't want it to block there because I want to use that space. So therefore, I'm going to have to move it, which cost me a corruption. And I'm going to move it onto there, which allows me to construct. Okay, so now you're going to see what it's all about. Now we're going to construct a building. Uh, and I've managed to get this. I have managed to get this combo. So, constructing a building. Um, how to construct. Stop at one of the four construction zones. Yep. Yeah. If you're not the first person there, you'll gain corruption. Yeah, blueprints, choose one of these. Um, and it's got to be exactly. So what I've got is I've got the grey for the bottom, I've got the pink, I've got the purple, I've got the black. And for the top one, I can use anything, but I am going to use ultra plastic. Because if I use ultra plastic where ultra plastic is needed, you get a bonus one. So the height of the building is five, but I get a plus one because I matched that. And also a plus one because I'm the first person to have built from this blueprint in this decade. So that goes on there. So actually the height of the building that I'm going to put on the board is seven. Uh, that goes back there. Those go back there. I get a seven and I put that. So I'm playing yellow. Now this can either go, uh, it can go in East Gardens or I can put it somewhere else. But to put it somewhere else... I need to take a corruption. Uh, Russ is here. Hi, Russ. Thank you for joining in. So, yes, yeah, so where am I going to put this? is the Brady Institute. Oops. So, yeah, where am I going to put this? Um, 
Now, the city centre, you can only, you can build in the city centre from any of the four construction zones, but always take the corruption. Um, just notice this one. How do you get this? Because that building already starts off there. So I'm not sure what that is for. Um, do I go for the city centre, which gets me an ability of obelisk, gain three victory points? I think that is just a one-off. A one-off bonus. Let me just have a look at that. Obelisk. Um, uh, the orange icons in the corner, that means it's used for the intro game. You still use it in the full game, but it means for the intro game, uh, yeah, that's what you take. That, that the, You only use those. Obelisk. Yeah, immediately score three victory points. Just for building on building on there. Uh, I kind of want something that's going to build me up an engine. So what does the planning office do? After you construct in a neighbourhood, you had no building yet, draw. Let's go with that one. Okay, so I'm going to build in East Gardens, and I'm going to build it there. Um, so you can see from Battle Cam, uh, my building here is now higher than this building, so I'm going to get bonus points uh, at the end of the round for having the highest building in here. Also, at the end of the round, there is a point for the highest building in the whole city, I believe. Um, so, so I've done that. I've done that. I spend me things. Now, it's not me actually doing it. It's me using my corruption to take an action of another player. I think that's right. Um... Now, activating power cards. Right, so, tenant powers. You may activate a tenant power when you construct on the building space connected to a tenant tile. Yes, so I am going to choose to activate this, which basically says, take a planning office card if available. So that is mine. Now I can use that. You are allowed to have multiple copies of the same card. Um, However, when you use multiple power cards of the same name in the same action, you gain one corruption for each extra power. Right, okay, yeah. The question is, after you construct a neighbourhood, you had no building yet, draw. Can I do that right now? Card number 13, planning office. I wonder if I can use it straight away. Planning office. You may use planning office in a neighbourhood you had buildings in previously, but they were all demolished, yep. So I think I can use that. You are allowed to have... A... <laughs> Where are power cards explained? Page 26. Nope. Just checking where power cards are explained, because I'm sure I've seen it somewhere. Yeah, so the tenant tile grants you a power card. Keep the card face up until you used to use it. Um, the arrow means once per round. I think I can use it. If anybody knows otherwise, then let me know. Tenant powers activate after a building is constructed. It says there. So the building has been constructed. The tenant power activates. That gives me a card. If you gain any flaws from a tenant power, you can't use them to match blueprints to construct that building. Yeah. After you construct in a neighbourhood. I'm not sure whether I can or not. Does seem a little odd, if I could. I think I have to have had that in play beforehand. But it doesn't say immediately after. I don't know. What do you, th what do you think? Should I, should, I get, should I draw a car, draw a tile or not? In the meantime, while you're deciding that, I'm going to have a drink of milk. And then I'm going to take my actual go. So I can't move to within this zone. I could move there and construct, but I don't have that. So I'm going to move into this zone here. And I'm going to go to the bank. Yeah, so I'm going to go to the bank. That loses me to corruption, and because I was the first player to pass this area, I get one of the bonus tiles. 
Now, one of those bonus tiles is card number nine, which is the mayor's office. Move your mogul to a space already occupied by another player's mogul and take that action, gain corruption. Uh, I might just take the ultra plastic because ultra plastic is cool. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think so. So we're going to take ultra plastic. So that bonus tile disappears and I get ultra plastic. Uh, Russ is saying he's been ages since you played and it was at Essen 2019. Yeah, and things have probably moved on since then. <laughs> but if anybody wants to BGG search it, the question is, um, <clears throat> can I use the planning office power card immediately after gaining it on the building that I built that actually got it? That's, that's the question. If I can, I basically have a tile. Right, so that's that done. These spaces have been activated. What's these for? I think they just need to go there now. Um, this, these are kind of put on the board as a reminder, but I'm not sure whether you need to or not. Right, so it's now this one. Uh, are we going to move or are we going to block? If we block, it's going to go there. And am I bothered about that space? I don't think I am. No, I don't think I'm bothered about that space. So this little fella is going to go here and block. Right, next is red. Move or block. So if I move, I could even go there. Uh, can't find any information on BGG. Thank you for looking. That's another thing I need to make a note of this. Things to ask Gil. We need clarification on card number 13, the planning office. If you are watching this, Gil, we need clarification on that card. Uh, and let me know. Let me know if I could have done this or not. So if I block, it's going to go there. It's, yeah, it's going to go there. That is the next zone, and it is the first available space in the next zone. And I... And that is just that is lose to corruption. It's either that or no, no. I might as well move there. I might as well gain one corruption to lose two corruption. Ah, but you lose a victory point as well. That's where the rule makes sense to stop you doing that. That rule that I came across earlier on that said um, if you lose any corruption when taking the action of one of the neutral moguls, you lose a point. I think that's why. So if I was to do that, I would spend a corruption to lose two, I'd, I'd gain a corruption to lose two corruption and I'd also lose a point. So I'm not going to do that. I, I Do I just want to move it there? Uh, sorry, do I just want to move put, put it there to block? But that leaves the construction spaces available for me. And I don't really want to construct at the moment. I might just have to skip over the bonus spaces and go over here. Yeah, and I don't know how bad this corruption is. I'm, I, maybe I should be going up and up on the corruption. I'm not sure. So we're just going to go there to block. Right, my go. I'm going to zoom around. So we're not going to construct. We're going to skip over the bonus spaces, which means I get another one of these. So I'm going to take that one, uh, which is two of these floors, which then replenish. So what do we want? Do we want to go for another big one? No, let's go for this one. So we'll go for grey and pink. Okay, and I think that replenishes. I think I read that somewhere. Solo game. Bonus spaces. Immediately refill to three floors anytime you take a floor. Yeah. Okay. Oh, any time you take a floor. So I should have taken one, refilled, taken another, refilled. But they are the two that I want. So let's have two more. Right. Okay. I can see these flowing quite nicely once... Yeah, once I've got it down and actually got used to it. Um, can I make the other players not construct any buildings ever? 
I think they're going to construct at the end of the round. I think I read that somewhere. Um, do, 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 do. Right. If a neutral mogul stops on a tenant with a building, the player who owns the building takes a floor as normal. Yep. Yeah. If the building is owned by the controlling player, they still draw a floor, but we're getting karunk. Right. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Um, oh, this happens if the neutral mogul is blocking or moving. Ah, I didn't realise that. Okay. Um, yeah, the first time each round, any neutral, any mogul stops in or passes by a construction zone, which is what I did, you must place a blueprint blocker tile on this round's blueprint card, which I did. If you use that mogul to construct, then you put it on the one that you did. Otherwise, shuffle them and choose a random one. Use it to block the blueprint corresponding. Right, how's that going to happen? The first time each round a mogul stops in or passes by a construction zone. Ah, oh, right. So because I stopped in it and I built one, I can put it there. But if anybody passed over it, a random one would have gone on here. That's why you put the tiles there. So this is what's happening now. This is exactly what's happening. If I'm passing by this construction zone, it says the first time each round any mogul stops in or passes by a construction zone, you must place a blueprint blocker tile on this round's blueprint card. If you used it to construct, obviously you choose. Uh, if you didn't, you shuffle them. Uh, James is here. Hi, James. Thank you for joining in. He's playing a solo game of Nemo's War. Cool. Still haven't beat that game. <laughs> So these get shuffled and it is A. So A gets blocked over. And then these are going to give you move to there. Um, note that you will not draw random blueprint blocker tiles if a mogul stops on or passes a tenant with construction powers. Right, it's only the construction spaces. As soon as only one blueprint with a blocker tile remains, the number under the letter at the bottom sets the end of round corruption limit. Right, which we'll get to in a minute. It's okay that this last blueprint gets blueprint gets covered later in the round. Right, gotcha. That's quite clever. So anyway, I've passed this. I've done that. I've got me two floors. Where do we actually want to go here? Uh, do we want to go here? Or do we want to go to a casino? We've got casino. I'm reading these upside down. Draw until you stop or bust by drawing two of the same material, right? Well, they don't really want to draw that much. You can you can increase your space, but you gain three corruption in 2010. Next one, five-star restaurant, draw twice. You may gain corruption to draw again. Or construction firm, draw once for each construction yard you have. Okay, right, I only have one construction yard, so that would just be draw once. Um, do I want these? How are, we do, how are we doing for building? We've actually got everything we need to build this. We've actually got it. So the question is, do I want to stop here or do I just want to skip these and this and go straight for construction? Now that seems a bit of a waste. Yeah, let, let's just land here and let's get, uh, what's this, a random one and one of my choice? Uh, look in the bag and choose any floor you want. Yeah, okay. Uh, James says, got it for Christmas. I've been learning how to play from my videos. Two games so far. Yeah, still haven't won. Yeah, it's quite hard. Uh, Mother Listeria is here. Um, yeah, thank you for joining in live. This is High Rise from Gil Hover. Uh, this is the original edition, which has the, uh, the card stock buildings in stands, but there was a new edition that went on Kickstarter with proper 3D fancy plastic buildings. Yeah, right, so one from the bag at random. I don't really know what we want, to be honest. Uh, and then one of my choice. So I'm going to take black. Uh, what have we got coming up? Yeah, I'm going to take black because there's purple here. So it's getting full. Right, that's my go done. Need a drink. Next up, we have this one. So do I want to block it or do I want to move it? 
That's a bit odd terminology because you're moving it anyway. If I was to block, it would go here. If I was to move, it can go anywhere in the current neighborhood or the next one. And then I get to actually activate it for one corruption. So can it not use this space? I think it can. I think it can use that space, but if I use that space and do that, I lose a point. Oh, I should have got points. I just remembered. I built a, a height seven building. I should have gained seven points. Yeah, I did forget that. Spend floors, score points based on how many, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, I should have gained seven points. Um, so do I mind losing a point just to construct something? I don't think I do. It would be one, two, three, four, five. It would be joint. So, yeah, I think if I've understood this correctly, I am going to move the mogul, this one. I am going to, yeah, I'm going to move it. I'm going to move it to there. So it costs me, I gain one corruption because I'm actually moving it and taking the action with it. Gain a corruption, move the neutral mogul to any legal space in its current or the next neighborhood. You may not move the neutral mogul further. It is possible that you move it to the same space that it would have been placed on if you're blocked yet. Yeah. Take the associated action. And if during that action, you lose one or more corruption, you you also lose a point. Okay, so the action that I'm going to choose to do is to construct, and it's going to be this one. So I'm going to lose the blue, the grey, the pink, and the ultra plastic. So it's four, plus one because I'm using ultra plastic where ultra plastic was needed and another plus one for that, even though these tiles have now moved on. I think that's right. So it's a height five building, which gets me five points. Okay. Uh, height five building. Right. Now I can put it in Harborside or I can put it somewhere else for a cost of one corruption. I'm gonna put it in Harborside and I'm gonna put it here there you go, so I'm putting it here, which lines up with the bank, which loses me two corruption. But because during the action of activating a neutral mogul, I lost corruption, I lose a victory point as well. Right, I think, I think that is right. <laughs> it's not that one, it's that one. Yeah, I think that is right. And now we're almost out of tiles again. Uh, and then the planning office. So whether I could use it before or not, I can now definitely use it. After you construct in a neighbourhood, you you had no building in yet, draw. So I flip that over and I draw. Random tile out of the back. Okay. It's pink. Right. Okay, so... What's happening next? It is red again. So I think we're going to block because I don't really like gambling. So I think we're going to block just by going to the casino. Um, and that's it. That's a neutral building. So it doesn't actually make much difference. Then it's this player. And again, we could block, which would be the five star restaurant. Can't really construct anything. Got that. Ooh, do we want to construct in downtown? No, I don't think we do. I think we're saving up again, aren't we? Although that is an exchange. Trade as many floors as you want of one colour with the bag for that number of floors of a different colour. Hmm. So I got the black, 
Yeah, it's not quite enough, is it? Okay, so I'm just going to... Yeah, I'm just going to block with it and I'm going to put it there. Okay, so now it's my go. And I'm going to move to there and get an ultra plastic. Okay, and then it's reds go. So, here is the question. Is red... So, red and blue, their next two moves could literally be to block and block and then I don't get to build in downtown. And I think that's what we have to do. So, red is going to block and go there. Blue is going to block and go there. And then I jump over the bonus space, which means I get one of these bonuses. Um, and I will take that one, and I'll take that, which means that refreshes. Does High Rise have full solo rules, or is it a game you can play solo? It has full solo rules. I am I am controlling two sort of dummy neutral mogul players, which are blocking my spaces. So yeah. Um, now, which action space do I want to go on? So there's all sorts of new things here that I haven't really read. Auto manufacturer, place a spire on an already constructed building and gain corruption. Now a spire, these are quite cool, these are really good uh, physical components here. So it's like a triple layer cardboard and what you do is you slot it on the top of a building and it makes it taller, like that. See, really nice. Um, but at the moment, I've got the highest building in East Gardens. I've got the joint highest here, and this game has ultra-friendly ties. So the fact that we've both got a building of height five means we're both gonna get the points. For the, there seems to be hairs on all of these things. There you go. Right. So yeah, so I'm not going to get any extra points by making the spire any higher there. Shouldn't that building have been six? Uh, which building was it? It was this one, wasn't it? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I think you're right, Mark. Okay, well, I definitely don't need a spire then. Clearly can't count properly. Yeah, because it's four normally and plus two. Yeah, you're right. Six. Thank you. Awesome. Right. So we don't need a spire. Uh, electronics manufacturer. Gain corruption and take a super high speed elevator card if available. And the super high speed elevator card. After construction, gain one point per two floors in your new building as a one use card. So, yeah, so you basically pick this card up and then at some point in future, you can use it to build a super high-speed elevator. That seems quite cool. We like that. Oh, the other option is a condo developer. Build anywhere. Use a floor as any other colour. Gain corruption. Right. Now, let's go for the electronics manufacturer. So, I get that card. That's mine. That goes there. I passed over the bonus space and we did all of the bonus space stuff. There are only four. One, two, three, four. Yeah, okay. Right, next is red. Uh, is red going to block? Oh, I just realised. Yeah, these are quite nice, aren't they? Um, I kind of want to go on that space. Build anywhere. Use as floor as any other kind of colour. Gain corruption. Hmm. Yeah. Are we going to be able to... Where's the building tiles? The building tiles should now be here, I think. Oh, I've lost a bit of track of these building tiles. I don't know if I'm doing this right. I think I am. Because I built there. No, I didn't build there. They built there. So they, they should have removed one of these tiles. Yeah. I did forget that. 
Okay, so the tile is C, so that goes on there, which means this number here is the corruption limit. So there you go. So that's going on there. I don't really know what that corruption limit is, but I'm assuming if I go over it, something bad happens. Um, yeah, I had forgotten to do that. Right, so next. Do we want to construct ourselves again before the end of the round? I think we probably do. Um, the question is, question is, do I want to pay corruption to use these other people to do other things? I think so. So I am going to gain a corruption to move this to here and I'm going to gain another corruption to put a spire and I'm going to put it on the six. So that has now made this up to height eight. Um, because I know what the neutral player is going to do next. The neutral player is going to come along and start building buildings of height seven. Uh, yeah, lowest score you want is 60. Any, anything below 60 and you've basically failed. Um, okay, so I did all of that. It is now this player's turn. And we're going to use this. Again, I'm going to gain a corruption. And we're going to go on... Uh, can I go to anywhere? So I could just go to here. I don't have to go to there if I don't want. I think that's a legal placement. Any available space in the neighbourhood or the next one. Oh, but then I have to pay the corruption and do the action. But it's optional. I still have to pay the corruption though. And then my corruption is then at seven and the limit is four. All right. Yeah, I'm not sure about this. Because if I don't, if I block, I go there. And then that goes there, and that goes there, and I'm over the limit. So I need to use this space. Yeah, I absolutely need to use this space. So I think, I think I'm going to have to. I think I'm going to have to gain a corruption to voluntarily put it on that space, but then not construct. I think. I mean, I could construct. No. Because I'm going to construct when it's my turn. Right, so then red comes in and red blocks. Oh, no, this isn't going to work. Hmm. Yeah, this isn't going to work because if red blocks, red goes there. And then that leaves that space for me, which isn't enough because I need to lose two corruption. So oh, how am I going to do this? Don't forget the extra point for your extra floor. Oh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, because I did. And the spire, I don't think, gives you any extra points. No, it's, it's height eight, but you don't get any extra points immediately for building it. Oh, this is tricky. Um, yeah, managing this corruption definitely got a bit too much. I'm going to have to read up on the corruption limit because I don't know how bad it's going to be. Right, end of the round. Score tallest buildings as normal. Neutral buildings do not score. Afterwards, instead of the regular corruption penalty, compare your corruption to the corruption limit indicated by the corruption limit marker. If you have fewer corruption than the limit... Score one point for every space. If you have more corruption than the limit, lose three points for every space. Uh, and But then what do you do? Do you then move the limit back to zero? Yeah, okay, right. So it's not the end of the world. It isn't like immediate loss. But I think that's what I'm going to have to do. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to do that. 
So I am gaining a corruption to move with red. Is, is that right? Does that put me up to nine? No, I think, I think I've paid the corruption. I've lost track of where I am. Um, I think that's right. But now I'm going to do the action on the space, which loses me to, to corruption, which loses me a point. And then I get to construct. Now, we don't have very much here. Um, but I do have ultra plastic. So I'm going to use ultra plastic as if it was blue and the gray and the black to build a height three building plus one because it's the first one built. So it's height four, which gets me four points. Okay. And it's going in either Bayside Heights or I can put it somewhere else. Um, by basically gaining a corruption. So I'm just going to put it here and I'm going to take another one of these super high speed elevators. There you go. Right. Uh, and then it's my go and I move to there and I do not construct. Oh no, I do construct. And I lose a corruption. Ah, so I was okay. Yes, I was okay. Maybe I got that wrong. I can't remember. Um, which way should I be going? Should be going that way. Right. Okay. So, I, yeah, I'm going to construct. Why not? It's it's only a little building. It's 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 height two. It's this little one here. Oh, look at this! So cute. Um, and yeah, I'll gain a corruption so that I can put it wherever I want to put it. Uh, which will be let's put it here so we've built a very little building here uh, it's a five-star restaurant two floor five-star restaurant I get two points for that Unless I already gained the two points. I can't remember if I did. Uh, draw twice and I can gain a corruption to draw again. So I'm, I'm not going to gain corruption. I'm just going to draw twice. Okay. I think that's right. If somebody is able to check that my points are correct, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I can work out what I built. I got six, seven, eight, 15, 19 but then I've probably lost a couple along the way. So I think that's right. I think I'm on 17 points. Whew. Right. One hour, six minutes for the first turn of the game, first round of the game. But it, it was learning while we were going. I'm waiting for Gil to get up so that he can tell us that we've been playing everything wrong. End of the round. Score the tallest buildings as normal. Right. So what happens at the end of each round? Um... The tallest building in each neighbourhood will score a bonus and the tallest building across the whole board will score an additional bonus. At the end of 2010, it's one point. Right, so I get one point for this, one point for this, and then one point for having the highest building in the whole city. So I get three. The other players don't score. Okay. And instead of the regular corruption penalty, can play your corruption to that of the marker. It's not lower, it's not higher. I think that goes, I think that stays. I don't know that. Um, it says instead of the regular corruption penalty, compare your corruption to the corruption limit indicated by the corruption limit marker. It doesn't say that you then reset the markers or anything else. So I'm just going to leave my corruption on minus four. Uh, then take the next five buildings from the tile and place one in the first available space of each neighborhood in the same way as you did at the start of the game. In the city centre, check the building spaces clockwise from the space neighbouring Bayside Heights. If a neighbourhood you need to place a building is full, demolish the shortest building. Right, okay, so basically these five buildings from this stack, one, two, three, four, five, these come into play. So these are additional neutral ones that the neutral player has built. So the seven is going here. Let's put on the 3D view for this. Uh, another seven is going here. Then there's an eight. 
which goes here. Uh, another eight, which goes here. And then a nine, which goes here. Okay, so the board is now pretty full. Um, yeah. Okay, right. Then what do we do? Discard the remaining bonus tiles and draw six new ones. Place them in a line as such. Refresh the blueprints. Discard the blueprint card. So this goes. 2010 is done. Here's 2020. And I guess we reveal 2030. Yes. So refresh power cards. So adjust corruption. Ah, so should we have adjusted corruption? No. If this is the end of 2010 or 2020, the player with the fewest VP loses two corruption and the player with the second fewest VP loses one corruption. I, I'm sure that's not applicable in the solo game. Um, corruption penalty. We've done that. And then in the full game, flip one power card face down. They may not use that power card next round unless they do something to refresh that tile. Oh, what? This is new. This is in the upkeep phase. Oh no, this is the players with the most corruption must now flip one power card face down. Where's that printed? There. Right. Okay. I didn't know that was going to happen. Well, we'll flip face down this super high speed elevator because I've got two of them. Um, the player can choose any of their power cards, even one times and ongoing cards. The player with the most corruption has no power cards. They suffer no penalty. Right. Refresh bonus tiles. Yeah. So we're going to get rid of these two remaining 2010 bonus tiles. Uh, and let's get some 2020 ones. Um, oh, James is re-adding up his score in a recount from your Nemo's War game. That's a spare one, I guess. Let's lose a corruption. Two random tiles. Two random tiles. Which isn't random, it's actually from here. Two random tiles. Lose a corruption. And random tile and an ultra plastic. Right. We are, I think, ready for 2020. So this is what floors we're trying to collect this round. Yeah, whether I should have built that little one or not. Possibly not, but if you build small ones, they can get uh, demolished and then you actually get floors uh, as compensation, which is pretty cool. Right, are we ready for round two? It's me first. I don't know what I'm doing now. I want to build this super big one, but in order to do that, I'm going to need lots of stuff. Oh, ah, that was only once per round, that planning office. That was rubbish. Yeah. Yeah, that was indeed rubbish. Hmm. Okay. What we're going to do? Are we going to zoom forward? Skip over this bonus space? Get something good? Um, miss out these nice juicy collect resources here? No, we're not going to do that. Uh, oh, it's not me. It's actually red. So if red was to go first, red could block that space. Or I could actually gain a corruption to do anything, anything I want to do. Um, yeah, I mean, I do want all of this stuff. I want all of it. But it's grey that I need. And I've already got the red. So it's just going to block that space. Don't get any corruption, nothing happens. Me. Now we're at the point here of potentially using other people's buildings and I think they get something but you also gain corruption, something like that. So, yeah, let me just reread that. In the solo game, if any mogul stops at a neutral building, nothing happens. Right, okay. 
Oh, let's put the building blocker tiles here as a reminder. Um, where was the using buildings? If the neutral mogul stops on a tenant with a building, the player who owns the building draws a random floor as normal. So if somebody stops here, oh, yeah, if somebody stops here, because this is my building, I'm going to get a floor. It doesn't matter who stops here, I'm going to get a floor. If the building is owned by the controlling player, they may still draw a floor, but will gain one corruption if they decide to do so. So that's if a neutral mogul stops on a tenant with a building, the player who owns the building draws a random floor. Now, does that rule apply to me stopping on my own building? Stopping on a space with a building. When you stop on a space with a building, activate the tenant power as normal. Then the player who owns the building draws one floor. When you stop on a space with a building you own, activate the tenant power as normal. You additionally draw a floor from the bag, but if you do, you gain a corruption. Right, okay, yeah. So if you activate your own... Uh, if you draw a floor from your own building, you gain a corruption. Right, that makes sense. What was I doing? Don't know. Need grey. But also ultra plastic is good. It's all good. Uh, I think I'm going to go... Here. I'm, ju I'm just going to move here myself and I'm going to take a grey tile. There we go, grey tile. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this one to here, gaining me a corruption, uh, but then I get an ultra plastic. Okay. Then it's red. Red is going to block by going here. So nothing happens. Um, then it's me. Oh, red's just gone past the bonus space. Ah, rats. So that's that moved. Um, I might put these on the board as a reminder so yeah, I'm going to use that as a reminder. So when somebody passes this space, a tile from there disappears. Uh, me next, where am I going to go? Uh, am I going to go to one of these or am I going to go to here? Or am I going to construct? I'm not going to construct because we're still saving up. So I think I'm going to go here. Um, I'm not getting these cards. I probably should be getting these cards. Um, <clears throat> no, what is it we need? We need purple. We also need grey. I've got the grey. I need another grey. Uh, okay, well I'm going to go there and I'm going to get the purple. How do you get your corruption down? Uh... Purple. Why am I uh, juggling around? Yeah, it's whether I want to spend a corruption to gain an extra one. So this is my question. If anybody does know or wants to check BGG, does your corruption reset at the end of the round? Because these numbers have not gone up. So it seems... Because in, in the multiplayer game, your corruption moves down at the end. In the solo game... I'm not sure what happens with the corruption that you have left over because it seems really hard to lose the corruption and therefore you're going to get penalised more and more each each round. So yeah, if somebody wouldn't mind checking that, that would be great. Thank you all. Um, right, so that's that done. Next is this one. Uh, so if this blocks, it goes there. So I don't, I don't want it to go there. <sighs> I just need to check if the neutral mogul stops. Yeah, again, a corruption. Hmm. I might have to have a bigger construction yard. It's going to cost me two corruptions to take it in 2020. But I think we might have to. 
Although that planning office card is, is a bit rubbish. Could do with the shipping firm card, actually. So yeah, I think we're gonna do that. I think we're gonna pay. Uh, so we're gonna gain a corruption in order to, for me to put this where I want to, and we're gonna put it there. And I'm gonna take one of these cards. Okay, right. Uh, corruption stays where it is. Thank you, Brett. Gil says that on BGG. Yes, yeah, so that's going to make it really hard. And I've just realised how this does not work. Because I was hoping it would be me next and I could go there. And it's not me, it's them. Okay, I'm playing this really badly. It's now red, so red... How do I get grey? How do I correct this corruption down? I'm going to have to go to the Masonic Lodge. Yeah. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. So, yeah, we're going to go... If it blocks, it goes there. That's fine. Okay, so it's going to block, it goes there. Doesn't cost me any corruption, but I take one of these tiles at random. Whew. Yeah, James has also confirmed you don't lose corruption. So that's the D covered over. So that bonus is no longer available. Is now this one. This is going to block. It's going to go there. Then it's me. I'm going to go over the bonus marker. And I'm going to take this one, which is an ultra plastic and one from here. And I don't actually need any of these now. So I'm just going to take the purple one. Okay, and I am going to land on the bank. Okay, so the bank is losing two corruption, but it's also, it's my building. So if I wanted to, I could get a floor but if I do, I get a corruption. I'm not going to do that. No, not going to do that. Right, next is red. What is red going to do? Light purple, pink, grey, grey. I've just realised I can do that. So I think that's what we're going to do. Yeah. So red, I am going to move with red. So again, a corruption. And it's going to go onto this space here and it's going to construct. So from the, from the ground up, ultra plastic at the bottom, grey, pink, purple, black, ultra plastic on top. So I've used ultra plastic where it was needed which means it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, because I got the bonus. So it is height eight. Here we go. Now, this is going in harbour side. So when you're constructing a building in an area that is full, you have to, it has to be higher than the shortest building and then you remove the shortest building and you put that in its stead. And I get this and I'm going to pay a floor to lose two corruption. There you go. I think that's right. Oh, that sounds like a cat. Hello, Loki. You coming to join in? Yeah, it's a load of cables. Yeah, that's a USB socket. Oh, he doesn't know what's going on. Um, right, uh, that's my cat, by the way, not the Norse god who's just walked in the room. Just in case anybody's watching who doesn't know we have two cats. And now he's scraping on the radiator. You're going to climb up? He's so funny. I'm going to have to get this on video at one point. He scrabbles on the radiator. And then he uses his claws to pull the curtains out of the way. And eventually he gets up. And then he just sits on the windowsill and watches the world. Anyway, who was that? That was red. So now it's this one. 
Um, so this one's going to block and go there. Yeah, that is the next available space in the zone, the next zone to me. So then it's my go, and I go there, and I lose two more corruption. Awesome. Then it's this one, which blocks and goes there. I think this is all right. Uh, get the high-rise box for him to sit in. No, Loki doesn't sit in boxes. Thor sits in boxes, uh, but Loki has no interest in boxes. He likes cushions instead. Right. Uh, what decade are we on? We're on 2020. We're about halfway through 2020. Because um, I'm just about to go past this bonus space here. Uh, and that gets me... I'll take this one. Uh, oh, do I want to lose the two corruption? Uh, the one corruption. No, no, no. I'll just take the two floors. So it's two floors. What do we want? We'll take the purple and the grey. Okay, and then where do we actually want to go to? We could just go to the five-star restaurant. Yeah, we'll go to the five-star restaurant. So I'm going to draw two. Did I want to use my super high-speed elevator? No, I think I'll save the super high-speed elevator for when we go for something crazy big. Um, so I'm drawing two tiles. I am going to then use the shipping firm to draw again. Okay. There we go. Sorted. Now it is red. Hmm. Are we in a position to be able to build something? No, we're not. We need pink and all black. Probably going to get the ultra plastic, aren't we? So, yeah. Hmm. I think red is just going to block and go there. Okay, so then it's this one. Uh, yeah, so I think I'm going to have to gain a corruption because I think I need to put this in a specific place. And I think the space I'm going to put it in is here, but I can't go there if I don't carry the action out. So I think it's going to go here, and that's just draw once for each construction yard you have, which is just one. Okay. It's great. And then it's me. Um, we could construct. Yeah, I'm just going to check the planning office rules again. Because what happens if I demolish my own building and then build a new one? Does that count as my first one? says you may use the planning office in a neighborhood you had buildings in previously but they but they all were demolished so yeah so so here's a timing question the neighborhood is full if i was to build in downtown right now the neighborhood is full uh you may only place a new building in a full neighborhood if your building is taller than the shortest building yeah demolish the shortest building which is mine and replace it with your new building does that count as constructing a building in a neighborhood where you didn't have a building. I think it does. If you demolish your own building, you still get two floors, but may not use these floors to satisfy blueprint requirements. For the, Yeah, I think you do. I, th I think you can. So that's another question about the planning office. 
two questions about the planning office and the second one is um, yeah does it work if I'm replacing one of my own buildings so yeah I think I'm going to go there and get an ultra plastic and then on blue's turn I'm going to gain a corruption to put it onto this space here and I am going to construct so the building that I'm going to construct is definitely higher than two. So this gets demolished. I get two floors as compensation. Oh, now here's another timing thing. I don't have space for those two floors. So the question is, when do I draw them? Definitely going to have to have a list of questions for Gil. Um, I should be writing these down, but it's all about the planning office. And it's all about replacing your own building. So when you demolish your own building, you get two tiles. It says I can't use these in the construction of the new building. But the question is, do I need to have a construction yard for these two to go on or do I lose them straight away? I'm going to take the new construction yard just in case. So in 2020, that basically gets two corruption. So I can't use these two for building this building. Uh, so the building that I'm going to build is, I can't build that one because I don't have the pink. I can't build that one because I don't have two black. I can't build that one because I don't have the pink. So it's going to have to be, so it can't be either of those. It's going to have to be this one. So blue at the bottom, the ultra plastic has the pink, then the gray, then the purple. Okay. So it's height four. Uh, plus one because it's the first one of its type. So it's height five and it's my building and it goes there. There you go. So that's going in there and that gets me five points, putting me on 25. And then after you construct a in a neighborhood you had no building in, which I'm going to say I did, Now I draw the pink. Okay. Now it's red's go. Red is blocking this space. It's in the next zone to me. It's the next available space. And then I skip that, collect a bonus along the way. And the bonus will be um, bonus I'm going to take. Do I want the two floors or do I want to lose the corruption? I think I need the two floors. I'll take that out. Which two floors do we want? We're going to take black and we're going to take, see I can be planning ahead for the next decade as well. Uh, I've got plenty of grey. Let's take another blue one. Okay so that goes back up to three. Right, I haven't done my thing yet. Which one of these do I want? Uh, we've got a super high speed elevator, so I'm fine with that. Um, ah, the auto manufacturer is placing a spire. Uh, yeah, because this is height nine. So I don't have the tallest building in the city. So I think I'm gonna go on the auto manufacturer. We're gonna place a spire on here putting that up to height 10. There you go, let's put that view on. That goes on there, so that's height 10. Um, and that actually gets me a corruption for doing that. Yeah. Okay, right, next is this one. This is going to... Oh, I think I forgot to do a thing, yeah. I, I, <sighs> This is the fiddly bit. Don't like this bit. This is these two. Oh, my corruption limit is going to be super low this turn. Oh, wait a minute. I put the wrong one on, didn't I? Yeah. Right, yeah. So the corruption limit this turn is two. Oh dear, I'm going to lose a bazillion points. Um, 
So I really don't want to be blocking these spaces. Uh, they too go. But also I don't know really if I want to do any of the other stuff. No. And are we going to be able to construct? I think we are. It's just whether I want to or not. Hmm. Yeah, so it's this one. It's just where where's it going to go? If I block it, it goes there. But I could just pay and it would go there. Or I could pay and it would go there. Should have used the high speed elevator. Yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna gain a corruption. And we're gonna go there and we're gonna get another high speed elevator. I do like my high speed elevators. Okay. Now that was my building so I could gain a floor but I'd gain a corruption so I don't I don't want to do that um, where's this one going to go again if this blocks it goes there which is what I'm going to do okay because then on my go I move to here I lose a corruption and I can construct a building which building do we want to construct we don't have any ultra plastic so it can't be can't be either of these two. Can it be this one? It can be this one. So this would be height four, whereas this would also be height four, but use fewer floors. So let's use that one. So pink, purple, blue, a height four building. Ah, now then. It can't be built in this area because the minimum height here is four. Oh, so I don't think I'm going to build. No. Okay, let's take those floors out again. What was it? Pink, purple, blue. Pink, purple, blue. Okay, not going to build. So yeah, so I just lost the corruption, but I didn't build. And then this one uh, moves to there. That's not blocking, is it? Surely it just moves to there. Yeah, because you have to stop. And that is the end of the second area. James says, is this game worth getting just for solo play? I'm I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I'm and I, and I don't mean I'm not sure as in I don't I don't know whether it is or it isn't, is I don't feel qualified to answer that question. You want to speak to somebody like Andy Grant, who plays a lot of solo games and he has only played this solo. Um yeah, personally, because I'm not that much of a solo gamer, he says, doing solo games all through January, um, I don't think I personally would buy a game that only uh, only for solo play. Personally. Um, but that's because most of my plays are multiplayer. Not at the moment. Um, and judging by the way this is going, for me, this is another game similar to Merv in that I prefer this at three or four players. Um just because of the extra admin of having to do the other stuff, which is clever and it works. It's just, I, I, I want to just concentrate on what I'm doing in the game uh, and not, not the other stuff. Anyway, let's, let's do the scoring. So East Gardens, I have the highest building. I get a point. Um, Harborside, I've got the highest building. I get a point. Not there not there and i have the highest building in the city which is this one at height 10 so i get another point i'm going to struggle to get 60 i think oh no maybe not because the buildings are going up right okay so now what we're doing is the corruption thing i'm one oh yeah one two three four ahead so i lose 12 points that's insane and then it and then i stay there yeah 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 this is this is bad this is bad uh, this blueprint tile goes leaving us with just this one now in play and we now have to put these on the board so we have some more dummy players entering the game 
I'm going to use the dark blue stands at this point. Right, first of all, a height 9 building goes in here, knocking out the height 5 building. Um, no, in fact, we can keep with the red stands. Then we have another 9, which comes in play and knocks out the 7. Okay, then we have a 10, which gets rid of the 5. Now, can I choose to get rid of that 5? I think I can. I think I can choose that it gets rid of that one. So I get two floors as compensation. Uh, let's draw the two floors as compensation. Bruce is here. Hi, Bruce. Thank you for joining in. Yeah, commute home is uh, is quick when you're doing remote teaching. <laughs> Uh, and then we have, what have we got left? We've got a, another 11. That's going to go in the city centre. And then finally we have a 12, which gets rid of my four, which again gets me another two floors as compensation. Okay, cool, look at that. The city's getting, getting bigger. Right, okay, so we've got lots of floors as compensation. I just need to check that rule. End of the round. If the building demolished is yours, draw two random floors as normal. If there's a tide demolish, the tied building closest to the first building space of the neighbourhood. Oh, right, okay. Okay, so there, I cheated. It, it wasn't mine that got destroyed. It was that one, which means I don't get whatever two floors I drew for that. Let's just take those two off. So it was that one. So if it's a tie, you can't choose. If it's a tie, it's the one there. Right. So after losing a bazillion points due to corruption, I think we are ready to start round three. Oh, except I still have to lose a card. So I'm, I'm just going to lose the planning office. Yeah, I'm just going to lose the planning office. These come back. Oh no, that was a one use card only. Ah, that wasn't used. Right, okay, so I've got three high speed elevators. I think we're set up. We need six bonus tiles. This is also a bit odd. I'm not sure why, why this is there, because normally bonus tiles... Oh no, I know why. I know why. Because bonus tiles, when they're placed on the board, uh, are not random. You actually put the things on there so you know what you're getting. Okay, we have some cards here that I don't know what they do. Yeah, very, very different tiles coming out this time. So we have bonus cards two, which is an archive, which basically allows you to refresh one of your cards. So there's that, there's another one there. Uh, card number six, which is a high-speed elevator. Oh, that's a super high-speed elevator. Okay. And card number 12, which is a penthouse. At turn end, add up, uh, add up to three floors from your construction yard to one of your buildings. Ooh, that's quite good. At turn end. Yeah, the end of your turn, so they're not included when using elevators. Right, okay. And I think we are ready to start for the last decade. Just before we start the last uh, the last decade, I uh, wanted to just mention again that this video and all of the other content that I'm producing in January is purely funded through the Patreon campaign. So a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters for funding the channel. I'm not doing any sponsored videos uh, for the month of January, taking a bit of a break from that. Uh, if you like the videos I make, obviously please like the video. Um, please leave a comment if you are watching this afterwards. Uh, let me know if you enjoyed it or not. That also, all that really helps the algorithms. Obviously subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed. Um, and yeah, if you're in a position to be able to support me on Patreon and help make more videos like this possible, um, then yeah, the link is in the bottom right, patreon.com forward slash gaming rules. All sorts of extra benefits for Patreon supporters. Um, yeah, let me know if you've got any questions. Right, so we're going to move on to the final round. And it is red first, and red is going to go there just to block. I need to get this corruption down, because that is losing me 
stupid amount of points. Yeah, that that's the bit. That's one of the bits of this game that I is a bit weird. Your corruption doesn't go down, yet these numbers these aren't going up at all. So you're basically losing more and more points from corruption each round. Assuming we're playing it right, that's obviously by design, uh, and corruption is just something that you need to need to get under control, which I'm not doing not doing at all right so we need to be building something big and we need some ultra plastic so we're going to go there and we're going to take some ultra plastic and i'm not going to take corruption right blue gray is going to block this space here red is going to block that space there nice and easy i could gain a floor by taking corruption if i wanted to but i'm not going to uh where's my reminder marker there uh, and where are the other reminder markers? Here. Uh, uh, Russ is here. Yeah, mostly lurking. That's fine. That's fine. Keep lurking. Uh, these are going to go there. Right. So. Just keep finding hairs everywhere. <laughs> oh, bonus. They, they passed this bonus space. So we lose that one. We lose the penthouse card. Never mind. No penthouses for us. Um, yeah, so sorry, that should have been there as a reminder for me to do what I've just remembered to do. Right. Next, me. We need another ultra plastic. I can get an ultra plastic by skipping over this space, but I don't know whether I want to skip over this space. I mean, there's the Masonic Lodge. I think the bank's better than the Masonic Lodge for me because I've got spare floors, although floors are points. Then again, one floor is one point, whereas one corruption is minus three points. So actually, the bank is better. Am I going to be able to construct and do the bank? I think that was the doorbell. That's probably my Anachrony Infinity Box that's just arrived. Unboxing video on Wednesday for that. Um, yeah, thankfully Vicky's working from home, so she's gone to get that. I did warn her it was a very big box. <laughs> okay, that's the postman asking Vicky if she needs any help carrying it into the house because it's so big and heavy. Very excited about that. I might have to have a sneaky look and smell of it before Wednesday, before the official unboxing. Um, Right, where am I going? What am I doing? I haven't got a clue. Okay, let, let's go with the fact that I'm probably not going to get two ultra plastics. Oh no, in fact, you don't need ultra plastics. I've been getting this wrong. You do not need ultra plastics for this. If you have one, you get a level bonus. Ultra plastic on here means you can use anything as a wild card. So actually, I've got the two blue, I've got the grey, I've got the two black, I've got one ultra plastic. I can do this. If I had another ultra plastic, it'd be great. It'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, it'd be eight. At the moment, it's nine. So yeah, nine is nine is good at the moment. Um, yeah. Which would be five points for the super high speed elevator. So I think I think that's what we might have to do. Yeah, we've got to do it. We're gonna go here. And we are going to construct and we're going to go for the big building. So that's E. So what did we work it out as? Two blue, a grey, two black, an ultra plastic, and then another black. Okay. And we worked out that was nine. So I get nine points. Uh, and I'm going to use a super high speed elevator, so it's actually 14 points, putting me up to 30. Super high speed elevator has gone. Building of height 9. Come on, where are the buildings? There is something in the rules about if you run out. I'm hoping we've not run out. There, found a 9. Okay, now where's this going? It's going in East Gardens, so we demolish. Now, if it's tied, can I choose 
which one gets demolished. Earlier on, we had to do it in clockwise order um, because it was... Uh, it was the neutral player that did it. Placing a building, picking a neighbourhood, demolishing buildings. Demolish the shortest building. If there's a tie, the player who is constructing chooses. Yes, excellent. So uh, B's just joining in. Hi B, thank you for joining in. Uh, we are going to demolish my own building. Why not? Because the points only go to the player with the with the highest building. The number of buildings I don't believe matters. Unless I'm getting that wrong. So there you go. I'll show B the... There you go. Fancy cam. So that went there. I got my points. That got removed. It's the planning office. Okay, so I take a planning office card, which is a bit rubbish, and I get two, two floors for demolishing my own building. Okay, right. That's good. That's good so far. Uh, that's me done. So next, it's this player. And this player is going to... Right, now. I want the bonus. I want the bonus so much. But I don't want to pay the corruption for all of these people doing fancy stuff. So I'm going to have to just say no. I'm, I'm not going to I'm not going to pay for any of this, am I? Is it worth it? Got that, I've got that, I've got that, I've got that. I've got blue, grey, pink, purple, purple. I've got that. Yeah, we're just going to skip it. We're going we're gonna to skip over here. We're going to block, which means we go there, which means that gets moved to there, and that title gets removed. Okay. Red is also going to block. That goes there. And then me, I go there, and I lose two corruption. Okay. Oh, I see. The problem with building the bigger ones, it's covering over the big numbers. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Anyway, I've done it now. Um, yeah, that's right. And again, I've, I've used my own building. I could pay a corruption to get a floor. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to do that. That's the bit of the game which... I think would be better with three or four players when you go on a space with somebody else's building they get a bonus but in the solo game you're constantly gaining corruption from it and i just don't want to do that do not want to do that right it is this one next so we could block by going here or we could move by going here so i'm just gonna hmm do we want to build another building yeah so actually what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to gain a corruption to go here ah but are we going to be able to build higher than the existing buildings i don't think we are because look at the buildings here six nine and eight sorry eight nine and ten there's no way we can build higher than that so no i, I don't think we're going to be i don't think we're going to be building we can build like a five and that's it and if you can't build you can't go on the space so yeah blue's just going to block by going there because i don't really want that space right red is next and red would block this space but i want this space So I am going to gain a corruption to move red to the space that it would have gone to anyway. I lose two corruption and I lose a victory point because I lost corruption. Them's the rules. Right, my go. I am going to skip the construction space. I'm going to go over the bonus space, which gets me uh, any one of these. So I'm going to take that one, uh, which is an ultra plastic and one of these. So I'm going to take... Uh, the the blue okay and then we replenish that uh, 
And which of these spaces do we want? I'm going to struggle to build, actually, apart from demolishing my own building here. Because, yeah, if you look at this, we have we have a five in here. There's a 10 in here. Yeah, I'm going to really struggle to get higher than the 10 and 11, the 11. And this is a 12. Sl slightly too big for the camera, but there's a 12 in here. Um, oh, boy. So, oh, and I had a shipping firm. I would have used the shipping firm. Okay. Um, yeah, okay, I'm going to do the five star restaurant. I'll go to the five star restaurant, I'll draw two tiles. One. Okay, right, next, blue is going to block, so it goes there. Red is going to block and go there, which means me, I can construct. I think we've missed a construction tile. Yes, we have, we've been past one, two construction tiles, so we should have had one of these at random. Don't forget to reduce back your corruption. What did I do? What did I do? Yeah, I'm not sure what my corruption should be on. Corruption looking good. No, corruption's definitely not looking good. <laughs> should it not be on four? Have I missed something? So anyway, I'm constructing in here. That's being demolished because it's the smallest building. So that gets me two floors. And again, not sure the timing wise, whether I've got them or not. Um, so this might be cheating. And then I'm building. Now, which one am I going to build? Might have to be this one. Yeah, so blue gray, pink, purple, purple, ultra plastic where ultra plastic is needed. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight points. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not backing anything this year and concentrating on playing games you already own. Very commendable if you can do it. Maybe treat yourself to one or two if you need to. Um, but certainly buying 20 new games every year or even more when you've got, you know, 50 unplayed seems seems crazy. Uh, and it's not like the new games are any better than the old games. Some of them are, but some of them are not. So it's just the way it is. Right, we're putting a height eight building on the board. Did I say eight? Should have kept these buildings in a organized numerical order pile. Eight. It was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes, it was eight. And I got the points for it. And it's gone on there. And because I've built a building there, I can activate the five store restaurant, which gets me two tiles. Tennis trail is not expensive and it is better than the old game. That is true. It is better. I mean, I liked the original game, but the new one is better. Apparently. I don't know. Not played it. Might be one of those games I just never get around to playing. Right. Let's just organise these so they're all nicely, neatly ordered. There we go. Okay. Right. Where are we up to? So I did my construction. I've done that. I've done that. I might as well use the super high speed elevator because it was height eight for another four points. One, two, three, four. I need to take a 40 bonus marker. There you go. So I'm on 41 points. It's not looking too bad. The problem is I'm going to lose a bucket load due to corruption. 
Uh, right, so this one is going next, and that's going to go there, which removes that bonus marker from the game. Uh, then red is going to go... Ah. Yeah, it's going to block the spire construction, and that would have stopped me getting a point. Hmm. But I think it's it's probably not worth it. If I get a corruption to place a spire, which all it does is add two to the height, which all it does is going to get me one point, but I'm going to lose three points by doing so. So I think that just goes there. Uh, then it's me. And do I just construct to end the game? I think we do. I think we just skip this, skip this, don't want any of these, and we just go here. I lose two corruption. And then I'm going to build, and I'm going to build the biggest building I can. So two blue, a grey, two black, and it doesn't matter what I use for the top two. So it's basically one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, so height seven building, which gets me seven points. And I'm going to use a super high speed elevator to get another four. And it's going to be higher than the six. So we knock down the six and replace it with a seven. There you go. Check out that. So we put a seven in there. Uh, I think this is pretty much it because the blue player then just goes to there and the red player goes to there. And then we do scoring at the end of the round. So the highest building in East Gardens is me. Uh, we forgot to do clearly one of these. So this is a bit random here. This this is a six point swing based on the the drawer of this tile. <laughs> yeah, okay, that was unlucky. Uh, it's a three. Uh, no, it was a four point swing. Where are we up to? We did that one. Uh, this one. I have the highest spire in uh, the highest tower in Harborside, so that gets a point. I do not have the highest tower in downtown. I do not have the highest tower in city centre, and I do not have the highest tower in Bayside Heights, and I do not have the highest tower overall in the city. Corruption, I'm one over, so I lose three points. One, two, three. Rubbish. Right. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Corruption penalty, yeah, we've done that. So that flipping a card down, I don't know whether you do that in the solo game because you will always have the highest corruption. So that, that seems a bit odd. I might have misread that. Um, it does say, yeah, instead of the regular corruption penalty. So we've done that, we've done that, we've done that. And I think we're finished. I think we are finished with a score of 51, which to be honest, I'm not too, I'm not too disappointed by because not only was I quite rusty with the game itself, I've never played the solo game before and the solo game is clever because you have to um, manipulate the movement of the, uh, the dummy, uh, the neutral moguls to sometimes taking actions for you and sometimes just moving them to blocking spaces. So yeah, that's, I think if I played a game now, I would do better. I would definitely have more of an idea. Um, but I think the solo mode for this game is not one of the solo modes that I particularly enjoy playing. Just just as a caveat on that, I don't mind my I like I quite like my solo games like uh, Feast for Odin, Halatau, Praga Kaput Regni, Underwater Cities, where literally you're not playing against an AI, nobody else is doing anything. You just play your part of the game as you would play, and then you add up your points to see how well you do. I know not everybody likes them. I know a lot of people say they're not proper solo games. But for me, they are the solo modes of games that, that I like because I it gives me the enjoyment that I get out of playing the game. This is a better solo mode than those games. I'm not, I'm not denying that. Uh, this, this is a cleverly thought out solo mode that requires, that, it, that is much more of a game because you have to actually really plan, really think about it and everything else. It's just for me, that's not the kind of solo game that I particularly like. So 
yeah, hopefully that's clear. This was fun though. I, I'm, I'm definitely glad I went back to playing this game because as I say, I've only played it the once last year. I really liked it. Uh, and it is unfortunately another game that I now want to play more. There is online implementations of it, which is good. Um, I know there, there, there is a Tabletopia version of it, but physically this game looks great. I mean, look at look at this with these spires and the way that these, uh, these towers and the way these spires go on. Uh, yeah, it, it's really good. The variability in the game is good as well because these tiles, and this is one thing I like about it, these tiles come out at the start of the game and they decide what the special powers will be for that game. And they don't change, okay? In a lot of games, you have new special powers that come out every round and you're having to learn loads more stuff. In this game, these 15 special powers that get dealt out at the start of the game out of a possible 45, that's it. They, they are the special powers for this game. And that, that whilst the, the icons around the outside of the board are the same every game, these here, and I didn't properly make good use of them, um, I don't think, but yeah, that's what provides the variability. Um, so yeah, really good. Definitely want to play this multiplayer. I think for me, this will be a three or four player game because even in a two player game, the two players have to manage a neutral mogul, which is the extra set of a bit, you know, extra set of complexity, which I, I personally don't don't like. Anyway, the chat has broken. Just, just to finish us off, I'll just refresh the chat. Um, how are we doing for time? It's five past four. I have a, a podcast, which I'm supposed to be recording five minutes ago, uh, but I did say I might be late. So um, yeah, I'll be, I'll be doing that now. Russ is saying he loses interest when a game is asking you to get an arbitrary score. Um, yeah, you see, I, I, I don't mind those. I don't mind those at all. Um, Rather react to the game state that's changing differently each game. Podcast is not live. No, the podcast is not live. Um, <laughs> it's Mike's. It's Mike's podcast. That'll be out, I don't know, next week, I think, whenever it, whenever he gets around to editing it. Um, but yeah, we're all good. Just before I go, as I say, another big thank you to all of my Patreon supporters uh, for making this possible. If you are able to support me on Patreon, then please do so. I will just show you what my plans are for this week. There you go. So this is my plans for this week, and this is all funded through Patreon. So today, High Rise solo playthrough. Tomorrow morning and Thursday morning, I am continuing my series of playthrough videos of Shadowrun Returns, which is a digital game that I've been playing for months and months and months and need to finish. Hopefully, with sort of an hour and a half to two hours on Tuesday and about the same on Thursday, hopefully that's enough to finish it. Um, it's been really good. We're getting, we're about 75% of the way through, I think. So yeah, I'm hoping that'll be done this week. Uh, Tuesday afternoon, I will be continuing my Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle-Earth playthrough. Uh, started last week, so this is part two. I'm hoping to do two scenarios. I, I should have time to fit two scenarios in tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon. Uh, Wednesday, just arrived, is the Anachrony Infinity Box. Um, so I will be doing an unboxing of that on Wednesday, five o'clock. Unfortunately, due to my plans going wrong in December, I'm having to do some rulebook work uh, on the Wednesday. Otherwise, I'd just be sitting and playing games all day and doing live streams. Um, is my Infinity Box the full one? Uh, is it is it the full box or, or am I transplanting? I don't know. I don't know. I'll have to go downstairs and see what it is. <laughs> I don't know. Um, Wednesday night, something that I'm looking forward to, quite excited about. This is Cloud Age. It's Alexander Pfister's new game. Uh, I love Alexander Pfister's games uh, and Cloud Age is his latest one. I've got it, it's down there, it's not been unboxed yet. So at seven o'clock on Wednesday, I will be unboxing it, then I will be learning how to play it, and then I'll be playing through it, okay? So that's happening on Wednesday night. Um, I know the first scenario is, is supposed to be really short and quick, so I'm gonna be playing at least two scenarios of that game, but I'm gonna be learning the game from the rule book. Uh, Thursday, Shadowrun Returns. Thursday afternoon, I am starting my Maracaibo campaign. So there are three uh, there are two campaigns that I'm playing in January. The Lord of the Rings Middle Earth, which is going to be about 12, 14 games or all in. Uh, and Maracaibo, I'm playing through the entire solo campaign. So that will be, uh, Lord of the Rings will be every Tuesday moving forward, every Tuesday at two o'clock. Maracaibo will be every Thursday at two o'clock. I don't know if I'm going to get both campaigns finished by the end of January. So I might have to sneak in some extra ones. We will see. Friday, I will be spending the day uh, writing, filming and editing my monthly video log. I will hopefully get that out for patron supporters on the Friday. 
um, and make it live for everybody else over the weekend. So yeah, that's not live. Because whenever I publish these things, a few people say, oh, Paul, what, what time is the vlog going out on Friday? And it's like, it's not live. It'll be out. It'll be out when it's done. Friday night, very exciting. Too many bones. And I've done streams of this before, but every time I do, I forget how to play. What's actually happening, uh, for those people who are Patreon supporters who are not on the Slack channel, Thursday night, me and Rick are actually learning how to play Too Many Bones. There will be a live stream of Too Many Bones on Thursday night, but it won't be public. It'll be a private live stream. If you are a Patreon supporter uh, on the Slack channel, I'll be posting a link. But yeah, me and Rick are learning how to play it again on the Thursday night. And then Friday night is when we're actually doing the public live playthrough. That's the plans for the week. Uh, there may be some extra things that I sneak in. I don't have any plans to do um, any more Gloomhaven Digital at the moment. Now, I say I don't have any plans to do it. In other words, it's not on there. I want to do it. I absolutely want to do it because it's brilliant. Gloomhaven Digital is fantastic and I want to play more of it. I just, I'm struggling to fit everything in at the moment. But anyway, there we go. Do the vlog live. No, I'm definitely not doing the vlog live based on how much, uh, how many mistakes I make and how much I need to, I need to edit and things like that. Um, so yeah, we're, we're all good. We're all done for now. I'm going to say goodbye. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, I'm going to go off to record this podcast with Mike. Um, and yeah, I will see some of you later on in the week for some more streams. Um, cheers, everyone. Take care. See you soon.